the Devil's Note, an interval so offensive that medieval music scholars referred to it as Diabolus in Musica. But in the hands of Paul Desmond... <laughs> Damnation never tasted so sweet. Hi, and welcome to the Saxophone Academy. I'm Dr. Wally Wallace. And if you're interested in sticking it to the medieval scholar as to what's a good note, then do give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more nerdy goodness. Now, today we're talking essentially about altering dominant chords and taking a look at one of many possible alterations and seeing it in the use in the hands of Paul Desmond, Benny Carter, and Jerry Mulligan. But here's the takeaway, here's the headline. The lesson I really want you to take away today is chords don't have scales. Chords are chords, scales are scales, and chords do not have assigned scales. Anytime we play over a chord or melodic section, there are 12 notes, 12 beautiful tones, colors on our palette that we can choose from. Whether it sounds good or not is not a matter of using the right scale, it's all about context. So for our examples today, let's start in the key of C. Specifically, we're going to take a look at the note of F sharp. That interval from C to F sharp is known as the tritone. Tritone because it's three whole steps away or six semitones. Six, six, six semitones. Satan! Now, if we just play this note in relation to the root in isolation, it can sound quite strident and dissonant. Now let's listen to a phrase from Paul Desmond. It's off the album Two of a Mind with Jerry Mulligan. Fantastic album. And let's listen to how he uses this note and listen to how it sounds in this context. <laughs> And when listening to Paul Desmond play this phrase, it's just not dissonance. It's really kind of exotic and beautiful. Now, this note, we can call a tritone away from the root. We can think of it as a sharp 11 if we like to think about chord extensions, meaning if we build another triad on top of the ninth scale degree, we get the, my brain doesn't like that. Being a melodic instrument, we're not building chords. At least I don't view our job as that. We're building melodies. And I like to think in terms of the 12 tones that we have at our disposal. So in the melodic context, a flat fifth may be better to think about it. Same note in harmonic spelling in a sense. Or it simply is thinking it is a borrowed note from a whole step up. But before we get there and put Paul Desmond in the context of what I think he's thinking, we'll never know for sure. Let's take a listen to that interval, that F sharp in relation to C. Listen to it in itself and then how it kind of wants to resolve. Now let's listen to Paul Desmond again and think of that F sharp not as a tritone away, but as the third of a different arpeggio. Let's listen to it in the context of a C and D arpeggio. <laughs> And some would call that a triad pairing. And here what we're doing is taking the C major triad and going up a whole step and building another triad. Now, theoretically, we can get there by, again, building a major triad off the ninth scale degree if we use chord extensions. I just like to think of it as a step up building another triad. So let's do an experiment. Let's put on a vamp and try playing the C major and D major arpeggio going back and forth and seeing how those sounds relate to the vamp over a C dominant chord. Now, 
Now let's extend the range and practice going back and forth between these two sounds, thinking of them not as two separate things, but just a collection of beautiful tones you can use. Experiment with that for a minute. Now we need to be careful that we don't just outline those two sounds in a vacuum. It can become quite repetitive and somewhat pedantic if we're not careful. So then you might experiment with these two sounds, pairing these two triads together, and then throwing in some other language, some major language, and maybe some blues sounds. <laughs> So is this sound a sharp 11, a flat 5, or a borrowed triad pairing? It kind of doesn't matter. It's just one of 12 sounds that we can choose from as a melodic instrument. We're painting with 12 possible colors, set classes that we'll talk about in another video. But the takeaway here is that if we are always trying to build a scale over a chord, now over the dominant chord, we can reach that note by doing an altered scale. Then there's numerous ways to think about that, building a melodic minor a half step above the root, we might come to the same note, but I'm not sure we'd find the correct context or that interesting application. So a takeaway, the answer is not finding a scale to find those notes, it's seeing how our heroes use that, because then we get the context. In a language analogy, we don't just want the vocabulary words, we want the syntax and the pronunciation as well. <laughs> Now let's take a look at the same note in relation to the tonic. Here we're going to be in the key of E major, so we're looking at a B flat, a tritone away from the tonic. Let's listen to see how Benny Carter uses this note to create a completely different sound because of a different context. <laughs> So here, Benny Carter has created a completely different sound by creating an augmented triad where we stack two major third intervals on top of each other, and it sounds like this. And you'll notice it's much more dissonance, has some strong pull to it, unlike the Paul Desmond example using that same interval away from the tonic before, the context is different. Now let's alter that Benny Carter lick and listen to how it might want to resolve. Now here's an experiment put on your listening ears. We're gonna alter that phrase again, only this time we're gonna change the context. And I want you to see, is it a triad pairing, an augmented usage, or something completely different? And the answer is C. Listen again, and now listen to it as that same note, a flat fifth away from the tonic, but used as a surround tone. <laughs> And so here again, we see that the context creates the sound of the note, which is why I've always avoided, or more recently since I've started enjoying playing jazz, seeing a scale and a chord as a matchy-matchy thing, where if we want to have more sounds, we need to find the right creative scale to match with the chord, because it lacks context. The context we get from the recordings, and there we learn how to apply those notes, and we can create nearly infinite types of sounds by changing the context, rather than altering a scale and plugging it in over a chord. I don't come to the same results and I haven't found my students do either. All the answers are in the records because it has the context and the pronunciation. Now let's look at a different usage yet again. We're gonna use Jerry Mulligan. It's actually off the same recording 
as two of a mine, but it's a different chord. See how the flat fifth on this dominant chord is used. See if it's a triad pairing, augmented, or option C, something different. <laughs> And in this context, that same interval away from the tonic or root of the chord is used as a lower neighbor, where we have a chord tone, step down. Now, a lower neighbor can be chromatic, as it is in this case, or diatonic, a full step down or whatever is within the key. Here, it's a chromatic step down, but it's still a lower neighbor, kind of a similar function to a surround tone, very similar function, in fact, but it's a different usage, different context, and it sounds quite different. Listen again. <laughs> So the headline, the takeaway I'd love for you to walk away from this video lesson with is that chords don't have scales. If we're trying to find some of the beautiful sounds that our heroes played over especially these dominant chords where we can really create some tension and use some non-diatonic tones, don't try to use a scale. Find what the masters are doing and then emulate it. Even if you use just these three examples of how to apply one more colorful note, you'd have infinite ways to create sounds over a dominant chord or a major chord that's the answer. All the answers that we're looking for are on the records. Scales have their place and they're useful, but I don't think it always needs to be the starting place, especially when we're altering dominant chords. The answers are on the records. They were there all along. Hey, I hope you're having a fantastic week. I will be back very soon with another video. In the meantime, put on a vamp and go practice.